Oh, there we are. I can actually read chat now. <laughs> Go on. I, well, yes, today we are starting off uh, with the question, why are some games forgotten? Of course, as always. Go on, take us through what you've been up to this week, Frosty. Um, this week I've been trying a mod on my channel, which is, um, I've been going quite unsuccessfully to a degree. Um, so I've just been covering a lot of the Empire 2 new mod, etc. And, um, that's pretty much it really at the moment. Um, I'm going to be starting a new Let's Play, um, today. Um, so that'll be out now this afternoon, well, this evening. Yeah, so that's about it really. Like just trying to, trying to grind along. What about just, yourself? Just to clarify that it's the mod that's not been working. Yeah, well, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I think I the mod's okay. I I don't know. Maybe it's just certain factions I'm playing with. I've only played with really USA and Scotland. So I'm thinking if I play with a more grounded faction that's based on more of the vanilla game, I'll have a bit more success. So I'm going to try a few different things later. So hopefully I can have a full playthrough then of uh, an entire series so that's the hope whether it happens is another thing mm. you know what about yourself yeah lately yeah, i've been fighting against uh, my own issues with crashes been uh, trying to do some reviews but the game yeah just performance it, it, i wouldn't mind but it was in early access originally but now it's fully released i'm just like come on mate <laughs> this actually yeah, needs to mean. work if i'm going to show it off I get what you mean, yeah. It can be quite frustrating, can't it? Especially when you're looking forward to something, you know. And um, like I say, we've we've discussed this, of, well, a lot, of, a lot of them. We um, performance issues, you know, particularly on day one mm -hmm. release. Yeah, day one release things that should be working properly that are not working properly, and you know, I mean, it can frustrate a lot of people, you know. And I think, um, sadly, um, we've seen a lot more of it, even f from some of the great, even some of the best developers, you know. And I think that's when it gets to that point, I think it start, things start getting a little worrying whether we'll ever have a full game on release, you know. Yeah, so my yeah. fingers crossed. I have hopes. Yep, gotta have hopes, bro. Gotta oh. have dreams. <laughs> if you haven't got a dream, how can you make a dream come true? <laughs> Wow. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. But go on, go on. So, yeah, so standard performance issues with day one releases for games. Huzzah. But Huzzah, to yeah. the point, our topic today, why are games forgotten? So just to start us off, I like to think, like, what what is it like a game that stands out in your memory? That's that stood the test of time. Still today, you think, damn, that was good. Let's let's load it up again. Command and Conquer. Like the original, yeah. Well, all of them. I love all of them. I used to play. <clears throat> I reason the last. Well, it wasn't Command and Conquer, but it was um, Act of Aggression. Um, you know, what I mean, I used to have a lot of fun times on that, playing with my cousin, my brother. You know, just just online, just fighting each other, building bases. You know putting snipers out, you know, trying to be very tactical. <laughs> We'd have this rule where we couldn't attack each other for the first hour. So we both mm. had a so we both had a good opportunity to build up a really strong base. So when it comes to fighting each other then it'd be a good good old battle, you know what I mean? But um <clears throat> you know, think games like that um you know really got me into playing um PC because I was all console at the time, you know, PlayStation one, PlayStation well usually playstation one i can even remember playing the first command and conquer on playstation one as well but then it kind of went um onto pc and that's pretty much where i started that and stronghold i know they got a new stronghold out now um true but i don't know yeah <laughs> well, it's, but, it's um, a good point yeah because the, the brand new stronghold came out i, I believe you've, you've played the new one right yeah, it is, it is one or two um, on my channel. How, um, I've how never, would you say we, that compares? Um, to the original, I had more fun on the original, I suppose. Um, it's not a bad game. 
Um, I am. I it's, it's been a lot of patching and everything since the last time I played on it, so I haven't actually really gone back to it. So it's kind of the fact of, um, well, I don't know. Is this better? Is it, you know, but I really enjoyed the first Stronghold. It was them game, Stronghold. Well, Command and Conquer first. I used to, you know, love that game. Play on that for hours and hours and hours on end, you know what I mean? You even used to have the cheat mod that um, allowed you to play on a map with giant ants. And you had to destroy the ant nests and stuff like that, you know? And you used to love that, you know? So, yeah. What about yourself? What games do you wish that were... Well, ones that I remember, I think you always have to go for like the ones that got you into stuff. You know, those, those mm. the ones that pulled you into the genres. In which case, it's probably going to have to be Warcraft, uh, particularly Warcraft Two, mm -hmm. and Diablo. Like those Diablo yeah, games, yeah, remember, yeah, yeah, just came at such a good time when I was young. But I'd really say like the ones that properly got me into gaming, the ones that kind of changed the way I looked at gaming, probably would have been, which I was so glad to see. It's out. It's out now on Steam. Um, Wolfenstein: Enemy Territory. All right. Because that before then, I'd played a few multiplayers, but it had never been a huge thing to me. But that one always stood out as just being a good mix of like character progression, solid tactical combat. Like you had to work together as a team. You could not solo that. Yeah, I get what you mean, yeah. But then that, that yeah, this is what I mean, it's those things that started getting me on to the strategy strategy ladder then I suppose, and I was always looking for him for the next best strategy game, something a bit more immersive, something a bit more, you know, interactive, you know, and um yeah, and it's a shame really, because I think you know, something like like you say, the games that you've played, the games that I've played, I think, um, you know, they could really, you know, I think a lot of people do miss them, you know? Maybe I should do a throwback Thursday, yeah? <laughs> like we were just talking about. <laughs> Go back and uh, play on the games, uh, you know, relight those fun memories of just playing on them for hours on end, you know what I mean? Because I went from Command & Conquer and then I went to Age of Empires, used to love that game as well. You know what I mean? But they are still coming out now to this day, and they, you know, and I think it's the fun memories from the early when you first start getting into them. Is, that's the exciting feeling of it, isn't it? Is I found a game that, you know, re really triggers my, you know, my inner child. <laughs> <laughs> this is the thing, because when I brought this, this idea of, I, we literally were thinking about ideas of what to do for this this morning. When I yeah. sent that over, I was just kind of thinking, like, it was Prey. And more importantly, not, not the original Prey, but the 2000 and what it was. the one Prey 2, that's not called Prey 2. But I was thinking right. about that and how this is an awesome game. Like, it genuinely is. It's solid, worth a play. I can barely remember any of it. I remember enjoying it. That's kind of it. And so it's kind of That's, like, um, yeah, just it got me thinking about like what happens when you have these really good games, but they're just they're not really memorable. It's it's it's, it's like a song, isn't it? Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like when you hear a song on a radio when you're driving, and you think, God, I, I forgot this even existed. Do you know what I mean? But at the time, you know what I mean? You think, bloody, this is such a big hit. At the time, it's just it's yeah, yeah, you know I get what what you mean. mean. It's, you know what I mean? It's the same sort of, I suppose, the same sort of situation there. I'm just using that as a, um, you know, as, as a thing like um, an analogy. Yeah, um, analogy. You know, but it's just, it, it clicks the same thing, you know, when you you're like scrolling through your know, um, the, the the Steam library, and I think, oh God, bloody hell, I forgot I played on it. I like you know what I mean, or you know what I mean. Oh, I love to play on that again. You know what I mean, or What's this and it? that. You know, and that brings up another good one. So I was thinking about Prey, and the reason I don't think it stands out is that it doesn't have, unlike like Command and Conquer, actually a great example, that has hilarious FMVs. Like, yeah. They, they're just they're brilliant, and you always will remember them. Whereas Prey, do, it doesn't really have any standout, iconic thing. It's just overall, it's a solid, good game. And I noticed when I was, I was going through... Uh, kind of similar thing. I was looking for like just a, a random game to have a, a play on, and I came across Spec Ops: The Line, 
I completely forgot I had that. And that was fantastic. Yeah. And I'll say the, the one thing I did know is that, yeah, fair enough, I forgot that I had it. But the second I saw it, I was just like, oh, I can remember specific scenes. I, I kind of don't want to spoil for people, but I think at this point, pretty much everyone's played it who's going to play it. I can still remember scenes where it's like the choices you make and you know one scene that's often used if you've ever seen a review for it is like do you shoot in the air shoot the civilian punch the civilian how do you get rid of this crowd that right. just it, it keeps the game even if you need a jolt it's still there it's still present it sticks with you yeah i get what you mean yeah it's just so certain things it's like i didn't realize when i when i it's like what you was talking about certain things in i'm um, like command and conquer um conquer um it, it obviously i was playing on it when i was uh a kid i must have been about 12 13 now so it was a long time ago you know what i mean <clears throat> um and a lot of the people who um actually acted in the you know the thing actually big hollywood actors and i and it weren't until um i realized later on like god that bloody hell you know what i mean i watch him videos oh he was on and it, it, it clicks i where do i know him from <laughs> where where's he and then it clicks you know oh my god he was on. acting in an SM, fmv <laughs> yeah yeah you know you have smv and you think blimey neck he was on command and conquer like you know what i mean he was acting on the game like you know what i mean and you never you know what I mean? It just shows, I suppose, at the time how popular those games were, you know what I mean? To be able to get top Hollywood actors, you know what I mean? I don't think there was, like, obviously, there was uh, older Hollywood actors, not like the new generation now today. But I don't also know. one. You used to be able to get uh, some well, A listers on these things. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, who's the one I was thinking about now? He played the general, the bald guy. Um, oh, was he? I do, I do find it interesting guy. just to jump on this point of, like, the FMVs. Why did that disappear? I missed them. Yeah, it was. I don't know. I I really don't know. Um, we have to do a budget, and I I I'm got a clue. I you could just speculate on that, new. But that was that was a really good part of the game when you had a real life interact, not real life, but you know what I mean, a real life person, not you know what I mean, NPC or you, anything like that. You had real um, interact people and the real people. In, it, like yeah. I, there are a few that kind of took themselves a little too seriously and tried to make real acting out of it but so many of them like this is what i think kind of conquered this so well leaned into the corniness like they yeah. they knew it was bad they knew it was bad writing they knew it was bad directing yeah. but they sold it yeah they sold it didn't they? Well, that that was it you know i mean the game was good re regardless when you know what i mean it was you know it's kind of like i think they should do that for more games Yes, let's make a <laughs> let's make a petition. I'm just imagining <laughs> uh, God of War. Like they did like the new God of War and like actually had an actor come out. Yeah, Kratos and son. Wait. <laughs> well, it, it, it makes you. Um... There we are. There's a few by now. I, I, I've got to try and put the images to the face. Ah, oh, yeah, look at that. Now the, these are some big bloody A-listers. You're right. Um... I don't know their names. I beat I. Hold on, so we got we got some like hilarity in wow horniness and cheesiness. Yeah. One thing I was thinking about for this was so th those games had a definitive part of the game that was made by the creators. Mhm. Mm I'm always curious how much of this is just the community keeping things alive. I think a great example for this would be Skyrim. Yeah, that mods. I think mods have kept that alive. I think well, about the community. Yeah, yeah, the it's, community. It's, it's, yeah, well, I would say modding is is part of the community. For the yeah, game. yeah, yeah. That's what I mean. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. It's. I think um, they never. You never really had the ability to mod to do with these games. I think modding keeps a lot of games alive. The community, well, the, well, the old in ones. general, the com had mods in the old games. Yeah, but um, I mean, it wasn't yeah. as available as like you know yeah. nowadays. You have Steam Workshop, so just anyone can get onto it. But I'm looking at these pictures now. I cannot believe how many Hollywood A-listers are actually played in the Command and Conqueror series. The one out of Starship Troopers, but you love Starship Troopers, don't you? I mean, Starship Troopers is one of the greatest 
books, TV series, miniature war yeah. games, tabletop do, war games. Do the, the general, the general out of there that has his arm, I guess he's done in the in the camp. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, no, What's he's his a, name? He's a big actor in other things, though. Yeah, he's um, he was in Command and Conquer Tiberian Sun. Mm. Oh, okay. Right, let's get off that topic now, because I'll be on this whole <laughs> bloody day. Well, he's in a bunch of sci-fi's as well, because I can remember <laughs> seeing him. I think it's I think he's in Stargate, maybe. Yeah, he's a, yeah, he is in Stargate. Yeah, I think he's one of like the alien people, isn't he? Oh no, excellent! Oh. Just so good. As I was saying, like you have those um, clear, defined parts of the game, which I think kind of like evokes a memory, evokes some emotion. Yeah. But you also have the the community stuff, and I think nowadays we're starting to see games last longer and longer because you have so much stuff going on to YouTube. You know, whereas before you would say, um, recently I was reading about in Minecraft, someone went ahead and built like part of Minas Tirith. Really. Yeah, that's a lot of effort, that isn't it? <laughs> well, well, that's it. It's, it's freaking awesome, but it yeah, was one of those things. Awesome. Like back in the day, you do that and you'd feel proud for doing it, and you might show your yeah. friends, but that was kind of the full extent of it. Whereas now, you can you can make a full blown YouTube video for it. You can post stuff on Reddit. Like maybe feels... that's what maybe that's what it is. It's just the um, I suppose is the immersion into it that getting other people to enjoy the game with you because like as you basically know um like both us are youtubers you know I mean we stream we do videos etc like that and you know what i mean when it comes to playing games now i you know unless it's testing a game i don't really play games unless i'm actually on blimmin youtube because i haven't got the time so i think it's that platform that's maybe as well as um uh, as well as obviously the community that's helping to keep a lot of these game alive, games alive and maybe that's why when these games these games have been forgotten basically just because they didn't have the platform they had today you know it was kind of like a hearsay oh have you played on this game have you played on that mm -hmm. game you know what i mean and you didn't have the opportunity to get onto a platform to watch how the game plays because even if before i buy a game I will go on to YouTube and I will look at people who've had early access, this and that, and watch the game myself, you know what I mean? Because I'm not mm -hmm. doling out any of my money until I know, all oh, right, and this is something like I get into, you know what I mean? Um, so I think maybe that's a part of it, you know, it's just generational change, isn't it? You know, it's kind of like now there's so much information out there about the game in your know, you can get at the click of a button. Back then it wasn't, you know, it was kind of like, you know, uh, um, I, um, I can remember a friend that um, used to love Command and & Conquer and that's how he got me into it. Oh, you always go over his house, I'll play this game. And I'd be nagging my parents saying, can I have this, can I have this, can I have this, please? You know what I mean? So it weren't the fact of go, like strolling through YouTube or, you know, the next best 2001, 2002 games that are coming out. It's just kind of, and maybe it kind of lost traction. I, I will say that one thing. That. I, do, I do think a lot of the games I remember are ones that, like no one showed me i never knew about yeah. i just i found the game it was uh you know pre-owned box back in like game or game station and you buy it for a fiver at most yeah so i can still remember playing is it warhammer battle march like i can remember what? the game it was it was this really weird rts obviously with it was, it was basically a standard rts but with warhammer painted over the top of it <laughs> but oh it was amazing because i was just like i've never heard of this i picked it up for yeah about three four pound alongside oh i got a bunch of games with that for a couple of quid a piece but yeah, there was well, something it, like it. it was like special to you i think that kind of lodges it in your memory whereas when you're going on youtube and you're just finding videos on these things i think it removes some of that and even no, if you it find it removes you some of that yeah. yeah well that's that's why i mentioned command and conquer because it was one of those games that really, you know what I mean? Still to this day, it, you know what I mean? I haven't played on it for for years, but even if I, you know what I mean? I've been, I've been thinking over the last couple of weeks, you know what I mean? And it's funny how this topic got brought up about, you know what I mean? Going back to the, the roots of my, um, you know, of my, the games that I used to play then, so to speak. And, you know, Command & Conquer is always on the forefront of my mind thinking, that's the game like that's the game that got me into it all and i used to enjoy so much 
you know, just just you know, fanning around, building stupid large bases, like you know, and just you know, <laughs> straight on the defensive. You know what I mean? Knowing that I could defeat the enemy at any See, point, but I don't want the game to end. You know, so that's the key uh, point I was thinking as well. Player control. Yeah. Like how how much of it is is almost sandbox in nature? I, I would say those games, particularly if you include things like the map editor, it becomes a sandbox. Yes. And I wonder how when many had... linear games, how many, you know, I, I would say like things like Quake and Doom, where they're iconic for creating the genres, is a, a little different mm. to like most FPS, where they are just very good FPS games, and yeah. they kind of fall by the wayside. Whereas when you had that sandbox nature, when you can make your own stuff, and so things like, uh, was it Time Splitters? Time Splitters stood the test of time. It still has a massive loyal fan base who are pleading to get a new one because yeah. you could hit arcade mode you could build your own maps you could play with your friends like there was some variability something you controlled you can make it your own well i think that's what people want isn't it you know what i mean because you know with um majority of games you know i mean i know a lot of people are into fps and stuff like this but i think when it comes to certain games it, it, it's changed, you know, it's changed dramatically, you know, you know, I, I like open world games, etc. I like sandbox games on the specific reason there's kind of, there is boundaries, but you feel free then, so to speak. You don't feel trapped in that game, you know what I mean? And um, I've always had that exploratory uh, mindset when it comes to games like that. Of where I like, just want to go out, explore, explore, explore. You know what I mean? And then, you know, the time you've done about 100, 200 hours, you haven't even started the main quest. Like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm basically just hearing um, Witcher. <laughs> Witcher, yeah, yeah. That's um, that's what got me into it. Witcher, yeah. I just, you know, it, there's a few, but, you know, they bring out a Witcher 4 now, apparently, and they, and you know, it's kind of... But I, I, have, a, I have a quite broad spectrum when it comes to video games you know i you know you know Hold lineage on. game well, we, we... so i'm oh, sorry go on, crack on crack on yeah sorry i was just gonna say so we, we've talked about kind of like games that stand out for yeah. us and i would say by and large we've also talked about iconic games you know like Com command and conquer series iconic within the rts genre uh even, even time splitters iconic within the arcade yeah. genre i would say what about ones you feel just disappeared? Like, even though it was a good game, you just you don't hear about. Um, oh, what's that one game I used to love as well? Oh, I forgot. Per um, Prince of Persia. Now that is weird you mentioned that because yeah, that fair, fair play, it has not been talked about in ages. I love that game. What, what was the last Prince of Persia they did? Was it like the, the I don't know. two Prince of Persia. something or others? God, yeah. Know. Well, well just, just to clarify, which Prince of Persia? Because there's also been a few of them. I, th I, I hate I think that was... so many games now just yeah. released under the same title. I know, um, there's a few out. Um, oh God, if I spelled it right, it'd be happy with I have to say, Sands of Time, Warriors Within, stand yeah, out to me. San Sands of Time, yeah. I already played on the one mm -hmm. game, um, but I used to love all the, you know, all the park, hardcore park, the little, what do you call it? Parkour. Parkour, that's the one, yeah. All that in, in there. You know what I mean? I think that's what... It was kind of like the puzzle, when I, you know, like, oh, hmm. how do I get over here now? You're looking at the walls, or what can I grab onto, you know what I mean? Um, oh, I'm, I'm yeah, going to so ask, why, why do you feel that's been forgotten? Assassin's Creed. Yeah, I was literally thinking that. I think it's, it's just been <laughs> replaced. Assassin's Creed is the same replaced. thing, yeah. But better, don't I? But, it's uh, just an debatable. open world, you know what I mean? Well, yeah. Now. <laughs> but, but, yeah, my favorite one was um, Black Black Flag, Assassin's Creed Black Flag. That was so one of game. my favorite. Yeah, I liked Assassin's Creed Black Flag. Yeah, so I, I think sometimes um, they just get replaced. 
they are either something better. They brought up the film as well, didn't they? Prince of Persia. Oh, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, they brought up the film as well. Yeah, that's up on you now. You, so I, I think, tell yeah, you what, remembering it, it wasn't terrible. Which, oh, I, which is like glowing reviews for a video game movie. Yeah. Because the Assassin's Creed movie was crap. Did not yeah. like that. Did not like that film. You know what I mean, I was expecting something marvellous, but it, yeah, it kind of really disappointed me there. Yeah, little side note, I don't get why they really tried to bring in the whole Animus thing. I, I think they should have just done a movie in the past, and then at the end, yeah. like, post credit scene, it's the Animus. Yeah, or you know what I mean, or... Because t- technically, it's going back in time anyway, so it would have been nice if they started at the start and then moved it forward to the Animus. Do you get what I mean? You know oh, what I mean? okay, With that, like, yeah. Like, maybe have you know him, I mean? like, or desync at some point, just in the middle or something. Yeah, yeah, you know, we bought it to, you know, but it, it was just stupid, man. I didn't enjoy it. <laughs> That's um, how I feel about the entire story of Assassin's Creed. This is a little side yeah. note, like, we're going off on a tangent here. Yeah. I loved the first Assassin's Creed. I genuinely enjoyed yeah. it. Everyone said it was repetitive, it was boring. I was like, dude, every Assassin's Creed is repetitive and boring. Yeah. Didn't have that argument to begin with, but uh, I do definitely have that one now. But the thing was, it, it just worked. Like, I enjoyed... The things that were repetitive it was fun catching up on people it was fun uh, even when you had to like keep close to listen in on them while moving around the yeah. cities like that was still cool up until the end and then they brought in that bloody apple of eden and it was like magic aliens blah, go away yeah this was cool when it was like medieval and there was a hint yeah. of like religious magic something yeah. at work but it was like a hint it was always in the backdrop once they made that form of the actual story i just stopped caring i get what you mean it's just kind of like with it it's kind of you know i mean i i would just prefer it's just an assassin's game yeah keep all the animus uh, out of it it's, it's just it's just so an assassin game just, what assassins you know I mean? was to me assassin's creed was thief without having to care about being stealthy because i have a big massive mm. sword and also a little dagger yeah. thing in my sleeve but the sword was the main thing <laughs> Frustrating, bro. I know what you mean. What what games do you think have been forgotten and why? Well, I've got, I've got a few, and I say this Let's mostly because I uh, I have a PlayStation Vita, so I've been playing a lot of like old PlayStation games. And Siphon Filter. Tell me you played Siphon Filter. I've never played Siphon Filter. <sighs> so, so Siphon Filter came out. As would it be at the time? I suppose it would really be competing with James Bond at the time, I guess. Oh, um, right, it was okay. like, yeah, James Bond, Mission Impossible were big, and Siphon Filter kind of came out. The first one was, it was a success, but I don't think it was like a massive success. And then they had, um, I'd probably say about three or four more games after that. And it just faded into obscurity. And it was an incredibly good third person Slightly more action than stealth, I would argue, but still a self-action game. And I think there's been a little bit of a renaissance now, like a few YouTubers I've watched have kind of like, oh no, this game was really cool. It needs to come back. But by and large, yeah. it just it faded into obscurity. I hadn't heard anyone talk about it for like 10 plus years. As I said, I, I have a PS Vita. I would never have been able to play it otherwise because who still can play PlayStation uh, original games, you know? Yeah. Why do you think it's been replaced? I don't think it's well, been forgotten. replaced. I, I think it got forgotten. left by the wayside because, because consoles moved on and they don't do backwards compatibility. The one thing PCs technically always have is you can always play an older game if you're willing to set up ROMs or have an older operating system running in parallels or something. But consoles, you need the physical console. You can't play a PlayStation game on a PS4. Or a PS3 for that matter. True. Yeah, it just maybe it, it's just yeah. It just makes old games obsolete instantly, and you, to a certain extent, you can't help it when you look at like Nintendo, and they had cartridges, and then you look at the GameCube with Golden the little Eye. disc. 007 Golden Eye Mario Kart is eleven. Well, they brought them Mario back. Kart. Yeah. And I think it's because they had to, because those are iconic games that yeah, are... brilliant games, yeah. You can't get them anymore until they brought them back, until they remade them. 
And it's almost like we're requiring remasters in order to play these classic games that have just... No one can touch them because they're on old consoles. It's sad, really, isn't it? You know what I mean? I, I, I know things got to move on. And I understand that um, things get left behind certain ways, you know what I mean? Um, you know, but, you know what I mean, you, you, it makes you think, doesn't it? You know what I mean? Where would it be now? You know what I mean? How, you know it's, what I mean? It's why I'm a big supporter of... There's a, there's a university I'll have to... If I put this over onto YouTube, I'll stick a link to it. But there's a project for the preservation of games. And currently, they're, they're, I believe they're fighting in the Supreme Court for the right to keep like old games when the licenses are still in effect or have gone out of it basically they're not producing the game anymore so we're talking like old yeah. arcade games and like no we, we just want to keep the game preserved for educational purpose they're really having to fight for it why it's just a game legal <laughs> copyright oh god yeah. this is me why is the world so complicated? It's a computer <laughs> game to say yes. It's just a game, dude. Do you know what I mean? Stop being so like, oh yes, you know, I mean just appreciate that people want to keep your game. Absolutely. That's people. the way I look at it. If if you're not producing the game anymore, you're not selling it, and you have no intent to, to make it again, why not have it preserved? Yeah, why not? Then you know what I mean? For older generations to look back and think of like where did this is where it all started, you know what I mean? This is how you know what I mean? Yeah, like, this like, is you know what I mean? Think of it. This is where games yeah. were invented. This is where games were invented. So when your kids grow up now and they're all in this bloody virtual reality world and you know what I mean? And you know, you've got some black uh, black mirror crap going on, you know, you know what I mean? Where your kids are upstairs all day in uh, some mad world. You know what I mean? You can look back, you know, because, you know what I mean? It's scary to think where games are going in the next 10, 20 years. You know what I mean? I don't and... know. I'm, I'm quite looking forward to that. I'm not looking oh, forward yeah. to the idea. It, a lot of people keep pushing this idea that everyone will live in virtual reality. Yeah. And I, I just look at them like, I'm sure some people will. I'm sure they will. Yeah. And I'll leave them to it because. I like to live for a long time being an archaeologist I, I lived in a tent and it was amazing mm -hmm. I loved that time I think the only thing I didn't uh, love was the lack of showers you just had to go for like uh, to the creek well, <laughs> I lived in tents for years bro in the army <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly it's good <laughs> fun even in tents under a <laughs> poncho in the tree when it's armoring down with rain in like minus 10 wherever up in the middle of Scotland on a, and in the Brecon Beacons great so bloody miserable. Oh, yeah, like, I support, you know what I mean? I, I, yeah, it, it kind of does. Why not? One game that's just popped to mind now, which I haven't seen one for a while, is Metal Gear Solid. Remember the first Metal Gear Solid? Yeah, but that was because of the Kojima, the Kojima Konami breakup, I think. Yeah, no, I'm just thinking it's like, like a really good game, like, you know what I mean? How, how stuff like that should be, you know, preserved. And, I'm with you, yeah, you know yeah. I mean? Yeah, I mean, but actually, especially for series like that, where, like, I don't even think the initial game was called Metal Gear. Might have been. That's a really old franchise. It goes from, like, solid, um, pixel solid graphics, snake, top down isometric, all the way through to modern. Oh, I feel like an old man. <laughs> I know, bro. Let's talk about something more. <laughs> more recent. That's me. <laughs> to avoid that topic, the teacher. Yeah, remember. okay. <laughs> uh, but this does take us to a point of the change in generations. As we're saying with consoles, as you're losing the older consoles and the new ones don't have backwards compatibility, mm -hmm. what we've seen is some games moving over to the phone, changing to the new medium. I mean, you can play play pac-man you can play space invaders you can play sonic on your phone you think we're going to see a, a shift to like i guess preservation via monetization of adverts <laughs> oh i don't know it's kind of hard to speak as long as it, uh, well if there's money involved then yeah um you know what i mean if it, if there's anything i i don't know it just feels to me that in a lot of aspects, you know what I mean? It's like, I don't mind things coming up on phone, but I never play on my phone. My phone is just for one specific reason, and that's just a call. That's it, you know what I mean? I haven't got no fancy phone or anything. i got a Samsung Galaxy, which I've had for years and years and years. That's, you know what I mean? So, um, but I, I suppose in some ways, any kind of loses his magic. Mm. I don't know. You won't get the same experience with a, 
on a phone as you would on a console or a PC, you know what I mean? It's the controls more than anything for me. Yeah, it's the controls, yeah, you know what I mean? Because the graphics are pretty much the same, yeah, because phones today are, you know, top quality today, and they, you know, and they they can, you know I mean? Phones today got more gig than the I mean, older consoles, you know what I mean? Twice as well, 10 times more gig than the older consoles. You know what I mean? I can remember the 64, 64 no, 32 megabyte Sega, like, you know what I mean? And uh, it's just like, I don't know. It's hard. It's hard. It's just like it's hard to speculate, really, in it. You know what I mean? Because things, technology changes all the time. Um, so you, 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 you can, you can sit there and say, "Oh, well, yeah, it could happen. It couldn't happen." I don't know. What about your thoughts? What do you think? Well, it's, it's not so much hard something. Hard for me to I answer. Think, well, as I say, it's not so much something. I think that the preservation will all shift to that i think like we've already seen as i said you know some of those classic games being brought over i believe a lot of them are literally being called sega classics like that's how they're branding mm -hmm. them they did a similar thing uh, over on steam they released a bundle of sega classics it's some pretty good games on it actually a lot of them were for free yeah that was pretty awesome the thing is is it becomes selective for me then and just as like this is all about well it was <laughs> talking about games that are forgotten we're gonna lose out on so many good games because they're not yeah. considered classics i mean cult classics ones that a lot of people know a lot of people enjoyed are just not gonna make it into the limelight because of that you yeah, see freedom mean, fighters yeah. we need to see more freedom fighters there needs to be a freedom fighters too i'm guessing right, so, you haven't heard of that game dude. either yeah, I've heard of Freedom Fighters, yeah, oh, I've heard of Freedom good. Fighters, yes, yes, of course. I, I'm not completely into that, like, you know, <laughs> I, I just be pretty... games from the Xbox. Yeah. Um, it's kind of, I, I don't know, I, I suppose... Oh, how can I explain it? People, I maybe it's just they, they go in with a crowd, you know what I mean? It's, it's just like, well, people... I don't know how they do it, see, you know, now, to us... You know what I mean? You look at back of all the classics, because we are older gentlemen, okay? Um, you look back of all the classics and you think we back are, of that. Uh, vintage, you know I mean? sir. Vintage. Vin <laughs> vintage, <laughs> antique, but all, yeah. <laughs> I bet if any young viewers watching this thinking, what the earth are they talking about? I'm huh? actually not old enough huh? to be an antique. There's an official yeah, age no. limit for it. Sorry. What's that? I think it's, I think it's 50. I know, I know, well, archaeology, <laughs> modern archaeology is considered 50 years. I think it's the same for antiques. Right, good. Well, I'm not an antique yet. <laughs> Three years left for that. But um, I think it's kind of like where we played on games such as that, where we would get you know, a full game on release. You'd have a demo in a magazine mm. first on the console. Um, when you, you know, the PCs come out, you, you could play these games on PCs without graphics cards, without anything special, you know what I mean? Because it was so, you know, they, they, you know I mean, it was nothing like the games now today, you know what I mean? And I think in, in some aspects, with technology going the way it does, they get forgotten because big and better things come out, don't they? You know what I mean? And then... The, uh, the audience attention kind of draws gets drawn away and so when it comes to old games like say Command and Conquer and certain other games like that I think oh well we could bring another game out but is it going to be younger people playing it or the older generation are going to be playing it because of fond memories you know what I mean um, is it enough proven is, that is, is, nostalgia is a good enough reason to bring out a game well, do we then? Bring out another one. Well, I'm saying, we're, we're, we already <laughs> yeah. have. Like, plenty of games have been brought out, either remakes, remasters, uh, as yeah. well as just literally, what they call it, like, enhanced or 1080 editions. HD, sorry, editions. I think, I, you know, it's like, is it, with the technology day, people are wanting more, 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 more. It's where me and you are happy, and, you know what I mean, kind of. See? I don't think yeah. that's the case. No. And I think a lot of a lot of these like retro channels and a lot of uh, the talk about these older games that are getting forgotten and people are bringing them back to to try and you know show people that there are damn good games out there. Yeah, yeah, really um, good games. Yeah. Uh, most recently, I, I think it's called Red Ninja. I was looking up because I wanted to try and track down a copy of that because I never completed it. 
Ninja and... Tenshu? No, no, no it, it's you play as a. No, I know. Remember Ninja Tenshu? What, Tenshu? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Tenshu Z, loved best stealth game. game there was. Yeah, I loved that game, bro. Loved it. Well, actually, that's, that's another series. The Tenshu series disappeared. Yeah. And disappeared. It's just such stuff like that. I think potential to be such a brilliant game that I was, especially with the technology today. Like I remember, I used to run around the towns, and I'd have to kill every single one, right, without being seen. Now, if I got seen once, I'd have to start again, because that's how OCD I was. That's <laughs> with that game. I was that OCD with that game. I had to complete it without getting caught because I was a ninja and I shouldn't have got caught. I mean, I had a youngster. And I was it. Right, not being seen. Right, restart. Let's do it again now. I and I'd be on it for ages. You know what I mean? I'd be so uh, yeah. But crack, crack on, bro. I was just thinking of it, with those <laughs> sort of games when when the people are, are basically bringing them back up and promoting them to other people because there's particularly here in Japan, there's entire shops dedicated to retro consoles, so you can just go pick up. There's an entire retro gaming market. There's a section of Twitch, actually sections of YouTube that are dedicated to retro gaming. I think more and more people are starting to want a good core game rather than just spectacle. And I think there's been a shift now mean, in the yeah. industry. Yeah, because it's like, oh, this looks amazing, but there's no substance to it. Mm -hmm. And I always say the one good thing that's come out of it is a lot of these forgotten games, you know, it only takes one, two half big YouTubers to mention them and it starts off that interest again. It gets people looking for them. Well, that's it, isn't it? Because I Tenchu think the, the game... Is that? So you just got to be thinking, that, that would be good, actually, if Tenchu got redone. I would, I would oh. love a new Tenchu, like Tenchu Z2. Can you, Tenchu Z2. Yeah, can you imagine it, like, you know what I mean? And you're in a bit more... No, so keep keep it to the base, like, you know what I mean? And oh, just imagine a potential a game like that could have now. And how much fun you can have. And I think that's... I think why maybe people are, are thinking that a bit more of us because games were solid back then. Mm. Games were solid, you know what I mean? They were, when they were released, they were done. They were solid. They were, you know what I mean? They were complete. And well, I think as you know well, I mean? they they worked well within their limitations. Because one of the things yes. I can remember, actually, Tenchu is a great example. When you're inside, it was fine. The game actually worked pretty well, pretty darn well. And, and you don't necessarily need to be inside, but you just need to be in like a small uh, corridors. Like it could be outside. You don't have to have a roof, but having wall, wall, and there's a path. Done. But the second you got into a more open area, the draw distance, because the limitations of the device, you you couldn't see where the enemy were because you just couldn't see oh, far yeah. in front of you. And so it is a common issue with older games. I can remember the original Tomb Raider, I'm pretty sure, had that issue. And that's why like, once more, to work around this... She was in tombs, she was in caves, she was in tunnels. Mm. Like, they, they put it into places to make it work. Yes. Whereas nowadays, it's like reveling in the fact that they can have these massive open expanses and then not fill them see. with anything. Yeah, well, you could see as far as the eye can see, can't you? You know what yeah, I mean? And it's there. pretty. Uh, yeah, it's nothing there. And even in some games, and I like the. Even if you look as far as you can see the, the detail on that sometimes you're thinking bloody hell now can you imagine if you had that in a new ninja tenshu game you know what i mean and stuff like that you know um it, it'd be amazing wouldn't it you know and having these yeah you because know, I, I love stealth games i love games like that you know what i mean the ability to sneak around so yeah do it bring out another tenshu it's not gonna happen but it's nice to like i said this dream yeah, no, I, I, I think the team got <laughs> bought up and spread around. I mean, but at least, yeah, I know. But I think that's... I, I But but I think, like, a lot of solid games like that have been um, the pillars of a lot of great games today. You know what I mean? These games that have come out today, you know what I mean? Um, I mean, a lot of things have been taken off these earlier games to make... The games of today so i think a lot of these solid games in the past i think we got to thank because without some of them solid games and the and the teams that who made it i don't think we'd have a lot of other well I, i'm not saying we wouldn't but i mean you you could put it into speculation that um we would you know what i mean would we be as far as advanced as we are now today because it's like a solid core isn't it? if you know what i mean 
Yeah, but I do think so many games, old games this is, the games that are lost, forgotten, and left to the annals of previous console generations. There is so much that could be taken from them that is just dropped mm. because nowadays it, it's very homogenous. Everything, everything's an open world with crafting. Everything yeah. is a multiplayer FPS. Everything is like, yeah, you still have a mixture of genres, but they all follow the same rules. They all predominantly look the same. I mean, if it wasn't for the indie industry, I don't think I've seen like a really interesting FPS outside of Turbo Overkill in ages and well that's, that's it like you bring, you bring a good graphics. point you bring a good point up there because at the end of the day it's kind of like um obviously it's always been competitive um obviously you know you got your know, nintendo ps where well, nintendo and ps then when it and then now obviously when xbox come out and that um it's always been that um drive to be better but now it's it is like like you say it's this same game with a different face you know what i mean and everyone just seems to be copying off everyone to the degree but one they can't get done for copyright and two you <laughs> do get what i yeah, mean just, just, just legally like distinct fight. from <laughs> well yeah just legally distincted from you know what i mean now you know I mean you got loads of different like like survival games like i do like survival games i don't really play with them on my channel but um i don't mean the interest in survival games is there so i, I i've looked but like you said, it's all the same. It's just different, different landscape. But the the the, the actual fundamental of the game is is all the blimmin' same. You know what I mean? And it's the same with um, FPS. You know what I mean? It's all the same. It's is there's no distinct no no games out there now that disting that's been distinguished. You know, to well, stay just, on its own. You know what I mean? Just thinking on that point, because a, a lot of the older games I feel like didn't do too well because at the time. There wasn't YouTube, there wasn't a platform, you couldn't show them off. So it was word of mouth or it was magazines. And if you didn't get into a magazine, yeah. if you didn't have particularly like the, the big ones at the time, uh, I'm trying to remember what they were, like XBM, PlayStation World, Nintendo Official, I think were like yeah. the really big ones. If you didn't get into them, you were, you were scuppered. Yep. Whereas nowadays, there's so many ways to find out about games. You hear about them on Twitter, you hear about them on YouTube, you hear about them on Twitch, you hear about them once more from friends from magazines well maybe not magazines anymore uh, but no, you're about them online think... like you, there's yeah i think nowadays there's the opposite effect there's an oversaturation like you're hearing about so many games they don't have a chance to stick in your memory yeah yeah well that's what i mean this it is it, like i suppose yeah you're putting on a good point there because when you have a magazine you you have a certain amount in that magazine and one would stick out to you and i think oh that's the game i want now is oh, it's too much man oh should i play this should i play this should i play this should i play it or you know what i mean or oh, this this gives this but this don't give this you know what i mean you can do this in this game you can't do this in this game you know what i mean and i i think it's just bloody confusing man you know it's just like you know you know, it can come down to a fine point where people are choosing between one game, whether, you know what I mean, you can crouch or not, or something stupid like that. I mean, oh, I can be a bit more stealthy in this game, as well if as... that is the be... deciding feature as to whether you buy a game or not, then I I, I feel sorry. <laughs> like, seriously. Yeah, well, but do, 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 do you get what I mean, though? It's just like, that's I... where it's, it's come today, you know? It's kind of like, with me, it's more of... Um, Expo like, like the new open worlds and has more the explorator exploratory games and stuff like that graphics okay but they're not fundamental mm -hmm. to me um one great example was um oh i forgot the bloody game name now um well was that viking game i played on my it's a, oh. it's a good point on our video title why are some games forgettable <laughs> <laughs> but you know what we like bro we just go off on random trans oh, me. but I, um, I think i know you were about like vindheim or ba yes. valheim valheim, valheim that was one. it valheim now i love that game now graphically it wasn't superb you know what i mean it was kind of like um well it wasn't as bad as uh, minecraft and that and stuff like this but i think um but the ability to explore a massive expanse i mean um steps in for that you know what i mean um but actually 
And just just sticking on that graphics point, I would say some something like um, go on. You said it was now Valheim. Yeah. Valheim. Yeah. So something like Valheim, which uses that style, like it's a very yeah. common style in a lot of games, and when you see them, they do look the same. Whereas Minecraft, yeah. say what you want about it, it's a distinct style. You can't get away from it. You notice it. And yeah, you also Minecraft, get... Minecraft. Yeah, yeah, Minecraft is Minecraft. You can't, you know, everyone knows it, but, but just by like looking that, at it for ten seconds. But that pick, that, I, I suppose, that what I'm expect is like like that pixelated graphical. Well, I'm just saying. Yeah, what I mean. You even yeah. look at um, other games such as Darkest Dungeon. You recognize that the second you see it because it's a very distinct yeah. art style. And I, I would like, even argue that like... the older Modern Warfare's, the older Call of Duties, had a distinct art style. I think it lost its art style when it became it, uh, kind of too good. It became too realistic. Yeah, well, I, I'd say a lot of the old Modern Warfare's, you know what I mean? Uh, I'd rather play on them than the new ones today. I'd rather play the original Call of Duty. That yeah, was such but, a good campaign. Yeah, really good. You know what I mean? It was it was basic. You know what I mean? It stuck to you stuck to the fundamentals. You know what I mean? You weren't jumping around on magic boots. You know what I mean? And stupid stuff like that. And I don't like stuff like that in certain games. You know what I mean? I like that kind of that realism to you know what I mean. Just keep it basic. I like that. I do. You know what I mean? And I, I think I think some games just get too complicated. You know when. Yeah, it becomes too hard to play, and like I, I couldn't play half of these bloody games now, bro. I just, I just rage quit. I would like, <laughs> be keep killed all the time, all the time, all the time. You know what I mean? Well, go on, I was gonna grab that. That's something we haven't touched on yet. We, we've said like games we've liked that we remembered, and um, possible reasons why some of them are starting to resurge. What about terrible games? I can remember back in the day, I would play a, a bunch of demos and I would always remember the rubbish ones, like the really bad ones, because they're funny. You know, it's something you pop on when your friend comes over and like, hey, check this out. It, it sucks. Yeah. I, I kind of feel like games nowadays, I mean, we have the odd few pop out that are terrible, but they're all just kind of like mediocrely poor. But you, you don't get absolutely god awful because there's no risk in them. Come on, can you... Think of any any good terrible games? <laughs> oh, I don't know. I can't think of it. what. Not, not you? at you all. But I'm looking for something to play. No, um, not off the top of my head. Maybe you 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 say one, and maybe I'll click something. <laughs> I keep thinking like the them. the one percent game is like Road to Hell. Ride right to Hell. Right to Hell. I'm gonna have to look up the full name, but uh, it was a an old biker gang game. Yeah, I got it. But a road to hell retribution. Yeah, it sounds about. What's that one. like? A sit ah. You play as a, a motor, a motorbike enthusiast, shall we say? But it was just buggy. It was terribly, terribly written. The animations never quite fit. Like it wasn't even bugs. They just didn't actually fit. They didn't work. <laughs> and I kind of miss when you'd find these really bad games. Because <laughs> at least it's memorable. I mean, uh, even, yeah, I get even what you things mean, yeah. like, uh, what they call like the Fallout series. Fallout series, good games. A lot of the time you're remembering them because of like funny bugs or quirky things that happen, like with the physics engines and such. Like the comedy keeps it fresh. And you can still find videos nowadays of people posting up like you know glitch compilations of well, I suppose once more that comes back to platforms community yeah well I said tonight I think I, I think a lot of games are going like kind of like you say in the same matter there's no game out there now that really stands out to say you know what I mean because this is going to be the next open world game it's going to be the next open world FPS or whatever 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 um but back in the day when we used to play them you know what I mean I basically um um uh got my thing off friends or a magazine I'd buy once in a while you know what I mean because you know what I mean I I, I could have a magazine if we, I, I went down to the local shop and they sell them. You know what I mean? If I was a good boy, I could have a magazine. Yeah, pop down so W8 I mean, Smiths. 
Yep, yep, W.H. Smith's Buy That Magazine, or, oh, it's a demo in it. Can I buy it for the demo? You know, and, oh, all right, as long as you're good, we'll pick it up on our way back. Okay, and then I'll be good boy all day. And then... <laughs> <laughs> the second you and get then, it, not so much. <laughs> yeah, no, not so much then. But, you know what I mean, that's how far we. I'm talking back, you know what I mean? And we're looking at, like, that's like 25 years ago, you know, and... But that's how I found out games. Now, today, it's just oversaturated with... It's too much choice. It's too much. There's too much. It's too much information out at once. You know what I mean? There's too much to pick from. You know what I mean? And you 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 got limitations then, have you? Of what what can uh, what you can play. It, it's limitation of time. Mm. You know what I mean? It's just a limitation of time. It's way back then. You know what I mean? It weren't it weren't as oversaturated back then you'd have your genre to stay in you know what i mean oh i like these games when's the next one coming out you'd be looking forward to the next one and then you'd say oh while i'm waiting for this one oh i like this game or you'd be playing on that and then you know what i mean but then it comes down to the point then that you never have to wait six months or two years for a bloody game because they never used to announce it literally like you know what i mean oh this yeah, game is now we released you remember you used to... yeah yeah, yeah you know you'd hear I mean? it in a magazine TV. you'd see it on tv and then within and the yeah. year you'd have that game yeah. in hand yeah you are within the hero even less you know what i mean like you might you might the thing is see because it weren't so oversaturated you might not even picked up on the fact that another game has been released so the time it comes around for your information that, that you've all oh, you know what i mean you and then before you know it, the game's is another game out already, and you think, "Oh bloody hell, I didn't know that," uh, but it's already in the shops. You know what I mean? Because the, the, the information wasn't coming from you left, right, and blooming center, and you knew everything was going on. It was just like, "Well, they'd make one advert. If you missed the advert, or you didn't pick up this month's um, uh, gaming magazine, you know what I mean? That that it was issued in, and then you mm. picked up the following month, and it wasn't in there. You'd miss you miss out on that article saying that that game is being released." And then before you know it, you see an advert on TV or you pick up, oh, this uh, Commander yeah, Conqueror 2 is out. down the shops, what? coming out tomorrow, midnight release. Yeah, no. midnight, and you're thinking, whoa, okay, good, good, good. You know what I mean? And you think, bloody hell, you know what I mean? So the excitement then for another one is like literally just always around the corner. Now you can hear a game's getting released like, like years before, don't I? You know what I mean? And Well, I mean, you know it's in production 10 years before in some cases. Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? And it's just bloody stupid isn't it but that's the way things go i suppose well and you did uh you did pick up on something when you were saying that about how uh there's so much choice there's so much out mm. there so this is a bit of a, a hint for a later chat i'd like to get your ideas because i think the more and more i think about it i feel like creativity is dying in gaming i think 100%. indies I got it maybe. indie needs it because if they don't they're gonna fail but I feel everything else has moved to boardroom decisions. What will earn the most? Tick the boxes and let's ensure this game follows the rules to create a profitable game. Yeah. I mean, I, just I think answered, that's why... just answered it all later. Well, I, I was just going to say, I, I think that's why actually <laughs> yeah. nowadays, more and more so, old games that were forgotten were forgotten usually because they just, to me, I should say they didn't they didn't make the rounds they didn't get enough word of mouth they didn't get enough buzz yes nowadays they're forgotten because who cares it's it's the same game you played 10 times before and you're going to play it 10 times after sad thought you answered most of your own questions there with uh, uh you know answered it with most questions all boardroom now isn't it you know, and it's it's so much, you know what I mean? It's too much information out at once, you know, and it can get really confusing, especially for me, you know, uh, well, <laughs> my memory's not the best as it is, you know what I mean? I suppose there's a lot more games. I mean, I, I can even remember Plymouth Sega Mega Drive playing Golden Axe, you know? That game is stuck in my head. Golden Axe for Sega Mega Drive. You still that love that game, man. Classically terrible. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I loved it though. It was, that's what I loved about it. It was just, yo. Now that brings up a point. Because that era, that era of game particularly, so difficult. I mean, they're designed to steal your quarters. Like, yep. that was the point of them. Whereas nowadays, every game wants you to finish. Every game makes sure no one's left behind. In the old days, it was like, well, tough luck. 
and I, I can remember playing mm -hmm. a lot of games as a kid never got past like the first section still played the heck out of them still enjoyed them like croc 2 never managed to finish that yeah damn e difficult echo the, echo the dolphin played on that as well um do you think oh, what's a like... helicopter game oh what was a helicopter game which which is just... a few there, there was um you was just a little helicopter and you go around the map and you like there was terrorists and i all over on the white house and you were in washington and you had to destroy um oh, so i can just cold. picture so many games like that. i know <laughs> and uh, no, just, this this idea of like the, yeah. the difficulty decreasing do you think maybe that's just now people are just buying them completing them moving on rather than getting stuck and building a connection with them and gaining the sense of achievement well i i'd I say a lot of that as well it might be down to the fact that some people are bloody good you know what i mean i watch some videos of some people playing some games and i think bloody hell you see them on a keyboard and mouse <laughs> let me neck, you know what i mean if i had four arms i couldn't do it like that do you get what i mean and i think you know what i mean i i think it's some people i i i it's, it's a new generation in it you know what i mean it's not a generation like when i when i was younger and i think this is what uh, i i was out majority of the time i'd play all my games and that, but half the time i was out you know on my bike um you know uh doing stupid doing stupid yeah. crap right Consoles are and, there you know, for when it's raining yeah, yeah for when it's raining or you know i mean all the boys are going to come over crappy dailies have a go of um you know sonic or this other game or this or that or mario kart or whatever but now people are, you know, gaming is a living now today. And I think gaming is a living now today. And I think it's like a lot of games that I play. Like, for instance, I'm like playing Elden Ring at the moment on my channel. Now, I, uh, I've i never really been big into Dark Souls or stuff like that. But I, I mean, I always like to try new things. And I think that, that, that game ain't blimmin' easy, like. <laughs> not for me <laughs> that no, gave any yeah. easy right but i mean that's... but some people that some people make it look so easy and i think I, I and i i don't i think in some aspects yeah but i think in a lot of aspects no either i think it's just a new generation of players and i think they just you know they can well i, I will say games like like the, the soulsborne series any from soft game like they're, they're designed they were specifically made to mm. be challenging they were made to draw on an audience a niche audience that loved that style of game and i, I think everyone was really surprised it blew off uh, sorry blew off blew the up the way it did <laughs> <laughs> so i like the fact you're english you actually understand why that's funny <laughs> yeah <laughs> welsh bro in welsh apologies <laughs> you're, you're forgiven <laughs> yes yeah, so i understood one. that yeah. yeah, I don't think anyone really expected that one to blow up the way it did. And so I, I, I do feel like games in general, like the the majority of games I play, interestingly outside of Japanese ones now I think about it, because Metal Gear Solid was, was pretty tricky in places, particularly if you wanted a high score. Yeah. But they, they do seem easier, and not because I feel like I've gotten any better. Like, I feel like I'm still as rubbish as I was, and... Um, Obviously, there are some exceptions. In Total War, I do feel like I could at least say I'm above average at it. But no, by and large, I don't think I'm a particularly good gamer. But there aren't that many either. games now that I have struggled with. And at least I haven't struggled as much as when I was younger. That's the thing, see. Yeah? It's like certain games... Like, like I say, let's go to the Total War, like you said now, right? Now, um, I've played on Total War for years, all the series, right? Now, I think when it comes down to a hard total war, it's not down to the player itself. It's down to the actual game itself. You know what I mean, like like mm. we're banging Warhammer three now, right? Um, just for, just for a little bit, and and what that is is just the way the game is played. It takes away all, you know what I mean? It, it makes it a big rush, and I think that's why that game, to me, is harder than the other total wars. Now I can play on the other like total Warhammer two and I on legendary difficulty with some races not all races you know what i mean but yeah, majority yeah, of races yeah, i can play on legendary difficulty but yeah b b battles are not a problem with any race on total war because i understand um obviously the fundamentals of the units i understand what needs to go up against what you know what i mean so that that that's it you know what i mean but i lost my train of thought now 
What was you saying? Oh my god. <laughs> I can remember back. That was building up to something to be good. Rock and roll. God, I was just saying, I yeah. feel like games are getting easier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. Yeah, yeah. getting get easier. And yeah. as such, they're not sticking in your memory because you're not with them for as long and you're not getting the same accomplishment. Yes. Yes. And I, and I, and I think um, that in, in that way, um, sometimes I think the developers, this is speculation now, whether they do it that just so people can finish. Buy it, finished. Buy it, finished. Buy it, finished. So like, like, it comes back to your point where there's a lot of um, passion has come out of the game and it has gone back to the, the boardrooms, mm. um, and this and that. And I think there's more frustration out of the older generation, such as us, than it is the younger generation because the younger generation never really saw um, the solid games that were brought out when we were being brought up. And the way things were when we were being brought up. So they are kind of being brought up in this new age of um, gaming where they either just too bloody good at the game or the games are just, you know what I mean, fundamentally flawed in the way that um, they are made, either due to the fact that either they even want to make it easy or um, they just can't be arsed with it. So they just stick to the basic. Do you get what I mean? Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it definitely had me thinking it... actually about Call of Duty. When you were saying like yeah. the, the fundamentals of the game have changed. Yeah, the introduction of regenerating health and the shift away. Because for a little bit, they were sort of trying out with segmented recharging health. Mm -hmm. By doing away with even the segments, yeah, you drastically increase the opportunities to complete that because you don't you don't have to worry about your health you know take a few hits jump behind cover yeah tell yourself you feel good sing some calming kumbayas and then get back in the fight yeah well that's it it takes uh the like i what game did i used to play on um which was really good i used to play on this on my own online multiplayer um ghost recon um, online, right? Like you used to love Ghost Advanced Recon. Advanced Warfighter like, or... No, um... Or like the original? Oh, what was it Ghost Recon? There was, there was Ghost, Ghost Recon, Recon Phantoms? No, um... Wildlands, I think it was. Oh, that was Ghost Recon. Yeah, Ghost Recon Wildlands. Yeah, Wildlands. But they had, they had a multiplayer online 14 mm -hmm. on, on each now. And it would be a relatively big... No, not that big, but a relatively big map. But um, you know, one shot, one kill. You know what I mean? And so that was challenging, and that's what I liked. You know what I mean? Um, you know what I mean? Because I, I used to like being the sniper and the more carefully one, because I, I could play games better like that. Because I were good at the you know fast. I, I couldn't do that. You know, physically, I couldn't bloody do it. I just couldn't get my head around to do right. it. I had to take my time. I had to be able to see my enemy, or you know what I mean? I had to. That's how I play games. So, like a slow, more uh, a slower paced shooter is better for my style of gaming than it would be like a fast game shooter, such as um, you know the, the, the new to uh, the new um, uh, what do you call them? Titanfall. Uh, Titanfall uh, is yeah. the twitchiest FPS I've ever played, and I adore yeah. it for it. Yeah, and, and that's how I like to play. Um, you know what I mean? Because these fast playing these these fast FPS games, man. Um, I can't do it. I used to. I just. I just can't bloody do it. And I. I'll, I, I go down my mother's and ask them. I visit my mother and my my younger brother's down there. And you know what I mean. And he's playing on Fortnite, for example. And, and, and he's like that on the bloody. And I'm, how do you do that? Like that. You know what I mean. And and how are you shooting and building at the same time? Like you know what I mean. My, my old head can't. There can't was, do that. There was a very <laughs> very interesting. Like this, this is how much I'm into gaming. I read papers, academic papers about it. Yeah. And it was looking into how, you, you know, there's like, there's a point in your life, in all humans' lives, where your reactions decrease to the point that your brain can think things through. The logic, the reasoning is now better yeah. than your reaction. Well, the, the basic gist is, is that with gamers, I think it's around like mid-20s is basically, that's the end. At this point, you've been able to get away with how you play by being fast, by being twitchy and reacting to the situation. And around that time period, there's a shift where if you look at older professional gamers, 
what they're doing is they're preemptively anticipating what's going to happen they're using experience to make up yeah. for their lack of reaction so they're already prepared with what to do because they won't react as quick so yeah, when, when yeah. It, i can totally believe that when you're looking at you know a young kid playing a game and doing multiple things simultaneously particularly in a short time period of learning it they're going to be way better than an older gamer unless that yeah. gamer has some experience in it yeah well that, that's what i mean i i you know i mean but i'm long past our 20 years so you know what i mean i must be like <laughs> you know what i mean but like I'm, i say I'm over I, my I, hill. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's why it's, it's kind of like, yeah, you know what I mean? And I, I think that they, they, well, you need to cater for the old generation. Bring out a slow pace for a shooter, yeah? Something I can just enjoy and run around and oh, just man, like... Oh, they've got that. Armor. 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 I, I tell you, this is a, bring it back onto topic. It's a fantastic game series. Armor 1, 2, and 3 now, and probably 4 soon. But... It's one of those where you play it, you love it, you enjoy it, and then you just don't... You remember key bits from when you and your friends did something cool, but you won't remember mm -hmm. the game. And I think if that wasn't multiplayer, I don't think Armour would do that well. In fact, I, I'm almost going to guarantee that. What's it called? Armour. A-R-M-A. A-R... Oh, right, no, I just felt Armour as Armour. Ah, yes. Yeah, there's a very, very slow, very hyper-realistic... Uh, I've seen I, this I guess it is a first-person shooter. Yeah. You can be. I think everyone plays it third-person, though. Yes. You know what I mean? And, and, and that's why I like Ghost Recon Wildlands. I really got into that game. Because I could do it at my own pace. Do you get what I mean? And do you know what I mean? Everyone had a goal in the team. You know what I mean? So we'd be, you mean, all right then, you know, who, who's good at running around? So my, my cousin would be good at running around because he was just good at the, you know, the, the up close person. So you'd have the machine gun. I, I was more, he was like me and my other cousin then, we were both good at, you know, being a bit more stealthy. So I had my own role, this and that. Do you get what I mean? So we'd be the cover fire where the other two M which were good at close quarter combat. Do you know what I mean? So that that's kind of the pace. I like it. Do you know what I mean? But like, like when it comes to the new Call of Duties, nah, nah, no, thank you. I just can't play them. Well, you just this have me actually. thinking of a, a possible chat for next time. Yeah, what's that? Distinct role of online characters is lost. Yes. <laughs> yes. Well, funny enough, because I, I be streaming Elden Ring now tonight um, with Causa and Trepo, right? Now, I've had to play the game on my own to level up my character because they're way in front of me. So <laughs> I, I feel absolutely useless when I play him with them. <laughs> you get what I mean? Uh, they're way ahead of me in the game. So I've literally just been running around farming runes, upgrading my character this and that but we were talking about that that um capacity when it comes to certain ro roles in the game and one of them is i'm like look trap or the 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 you know wizard i'm the you know kind of the tank and i think um causes like the pan lad and he is a tank but he's got the ability to heal as well I'm so we're all taking those different yeah paladin so we're all taking those different roles when it comes to fighting bosses and stuff like that you know what i mean it's and come on it's a spoiler for next time but uh it is the entire point of multiplayer as far as i'm concerned if you don't do that then you might as well just be playing deathmatch yeah yeah it's like just all like all, all for one and one for all really you know, you know what i mean you you all i i i i completely agree with you but i think everyone should have a role and I think that would make an online game a lot uh, more interesting. You've got a role to play. Um, this is your role. Um, you don't. No one ever feels left out. You know what I mean? Um, so yeah, it's kind of. I, well, again, I, I'm not going to push that it. one further because uh, we've gone a little over time, and we will we'll have to hit that up next time. That's uh. That's fine. There you go. Topics. You get. You'll discussion. get used to that. You'll get used to that, guys. <laughs> we'll just ravel on sometimes and. You know what I mean? But like I say, if you, if, you know, got... I was just going to say, before uh, before we finish up, let's hear yeah. what will you be up to this week? Uh, right, this week, now I've made a decision when it comes to Empire 2, I'm going to start another campaign. I'm either going to go with the Pirates or an Eastern Faction. I'm going to try and, you know, mix it up a bit. 
um i'll be doing elden ring as well um tonight and i will i'm going to be doing a couple of streams on my own with it as well because i want to experience the game on my own um banner lord as well um that'll be streamed this week uh working on another episode for banner lord alongside the stream but i'm having a little issues with the mods at the moment um, yeah, that's about it, really. And just, you know, keeping up to date with the Empire 2 mod. Um, just, you know, just cracking on. What about yourself? What have we got to look forward to from you? I've got... Uh, yeah, i got a, a review that I was just about to finish, which I might not be able to finish tonight anymore. Uh, but hopefully, Lighter. fingers crossed. I just don't think I have time now. <laughs> it's like, it's, oh, what, what time is it now? It's, it's nearly 8. And uh, I am shattered. 20. So I've got like a couple 12, of yeah. hours to work. Nice. Well, yeah, well, review coming out. Hopefully that'll be finished up soon and get that out this week. And yeah, I've just been playing around with Feature Friday. I think uh, we might try something completely random. A little bit of... Oh, God, I'll say yeah. it here. Horizon. I was thinking I'd have a go on Horizon Zero Dawn, the PC port. Yeah. Nice. I might, I might throw in, I might, I might contemplate as well a throwback Thursday where I bring out something a bit more, you know, as we're speaking about this now, it's kind of got my interest into games that have got me into it. So I might um, take a look at some of the older games and just do a throwback Thursday, you know? The way I look at it is, like, as I said during this, so many games have been lost because of advances in tech, advances in, well, actually just changes in the gaming industry, moving more towards downloads. Someone's got mm -hmm. to preserve them. Might as well be us. Yeah. Might as well be us, isn't it? Might as well be the oldies. Mm -hmm. Just might as well be the, the gamers. <laughs> if no one else is going to do but, it, yeah. if, if copyright's going to get in the way, fair enough. Game on. Let's, uh, let's do it. Go on. Thank you, everyone, for dropping by. It's, uh, yeah, it's been good. We're aiming to do this every Monday, so don't forget to show up again if you're interested in wanting a bit of a chat. Yes. Yeah, show up. And I will be sorting out my Twitch as well. Um, so we can all have a chat together, okay? So this is what we're looking for. We want your opinions too. We want your thoughts too. You know what I mean? And you can go on a tangent with us. Love it. Huh? Oh, oh. Well, until then, as always, peace out. Till then, as always, guys, keep it frosty. Yeah.